adjacent to my sensory area is the association. So I may be able to feel something, but I can't tell, is it liquid, solid, fluid? Is it rough, of course? Is it the size of a dollar? Is it, I can't those finer things. So those are the kind of subtle connections. And what can cause these disconnection syndromes, e by damaging the cortical, the pathways in the brain, white matter, or those association areas. And then we come up with a whole host of problems, of disconnection problems. And I have a chapter in the book, it's chapter seven. I found about 160 of these. For years, I never could find a good place with all of these subtle agnosias. So for about six months, I was looking, looking, and I finally put them together and put those together. But these are some things that, for instance, abulia, the lack of interest, lack of motivation, I'll never forget. It's, it's very sad, but it it's, represents what we're dealing with. Years ago, I took care of these two motorcycle uh, drivers. They got severe head injuries. We were in ICU for weeks, pressure monitoring the brain. Four months, five months later, they come back to the clinic. And their mother, I, I couldn't believe, it, was, was so, she was actually relieved. And I said, why? She said, they were the most vicious. They were in and out of prison, roughing up the town. They got into this motorcycle accident. It damaged both frontal lobes. She said, now they just sit in front of the TV and watch TV all day. And I tell them to get up and take out the garbage. And they get up, take out the garbage, and they sit back and watch TV. I mean, it's tragic. And we all know about, actually, there was a book I have uh, years ago written, uh, it was a Yale David Koskoff was a neurosurgeon's name, and they used to allow people off of in prison and death row if they allowed themselves to have a frontal lobotomy done. It's basically taking a, a little trocar just above the eye and swishing. And that, uh, that's, that's how we start, that's the subtle disconnections we have. So here's a few, prosopagnosia, the inability to recognize faces. Recognizing faces is so important, not just to people, but to people, to animals. We recognize each other. A cat can recognize a cat, a dog, a dog. We may not be able, they know their faces. It's so important. The brain has designed a specific gyrus called the fusiform gyrus that allows us to recognize faces. About one and a half percent of people are just born with prosopagnosia. When you have a certain damage to the brain, you might not recognize, I've had patients with this. Anosognosia is the inability to recognize the deficit you have. Somatoparaphrenia, thinking your leg belongs or arm belongs to someone else. There are cases of people in the middle of the night threw out their left leg off the bed. You say, why are you throwing your left leg off the bed? It's not mine, it doesn't belong to me. Anton Babinski syndrome, these people used to be thought of as crazy. They are cortically blind. You damage the tip of the pole in the occipital lobe. You're cortically, you can't see anything. Incidentally, if I shine a light in the eye, the pupils will still react. That's a different pathway through the brainstem. But you damage the area around it, they won't know they're blind. So they're cortically blind, but they'll confabulate and think they see things. It's not that they're lying to you. Those are the subtleties of this. Visual agnosia, you can see object, but you can't identify them. And capture as delusion, thinking your spouse has been replaced by an alien. It's not that you don't see your spouse, but when you see them, you say, they're, 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 but you don't believe that's them. They're replaced by an alien. So again, take somatoparaphrenia. Might seem like a simple thing, not a big thing.